Have you ever wondered what life is like for an otter? Let's find out. My name is Kim. I'm a biologist studying river otters in the Yukon with the Wildlife Conservation Society. We're using motion-triggered cameras to get a closer look at these playful creatures. This looks like great otter habitat, and I found a trail leading onto the shore. I wonder what came by on it. I'm mounting the camera low to the ground so that it will take pictures right at otter height. There. We'll come back in a few days and see who went by. Wow, there are a lot of animals that use this trail. But no otters. How do we know where to look for them? Let's think about why they come onto shore. That should give us some clues. Otters live throughout the boreal forest and spend most of their time in or very near the water. They come onto land to mate and have their pups, to feed, and to communicate with other otters. Luckily for us, Otters are creatures of habit. Most of their on-land activities focus around specific sites. What do they do there? They come onto land to sleep and eat, and to gather information and send messages. How do you think otters communicate? Otters communicate with members of their family or social group through touch and vocalizations, much like we do with our friends and families. Lots of talking, wrestling, and cuddling. For other otters, though, they leave notes that can be read by the right nose. Scent is the main way that otters communicate with individuals outside of their immediate family or social group. When otters come to shore, they sniff the ground to learn about who else has been around. Stirring up the ground and vegetation increases airflow, helping scent to travel. When it's time to leave his or her own smelly message, an otter will pee or poop on the specific spot, like dogs peeing on a fire hydrant. Sometimes they leave a smelly jelly on top for extra scent. A scent mark on top of a pile of vegetation is really hard to miss. Did you notice the dance? Otters always do a latrine dance before doing their business, stamping their feet and wriggling around. We don't know exactly why, but it sure looks like fun. Any otter passing through will visit these communal sites to pick up the latest news. We call them latrines, and they can be used for years. As the piles of poop, or scat, degrade over time, little mounds of fish scales, which take a long time to decompose, are left behind for the curious naturalist to discover. Now we know what to look for. Let's head out onto the river. We'll check out trails emerging from the water and look for places where the ground and vegetation has been dug up and maybe find some fish scales. These will be great spots for cameras. This looks like a good spot. And look, fresh scat. Even my human nose can smell it. I'll set up some cameras. So some of the places that we put the cameras are right on the edge of a river bank or right on the edge of the lake shore. And they're places where the otters just come up and hang out for a while and then go back into the water. But sometimes there's places where there's, say, a creek and then there's a little pond up here. And there'll be a trail that connects the two. And those trails are used all the time by all kinds of different animals. And so the kinds of footage we get are really cool. On the same trail, in the same few days, we can have otters going across, sometimes one, two, three, four, five otters in a row. Sometimes we get beavers going across at the same time, hauling food back and forth. Sometimes we can get bears and coyotes.
Now that we're set up in the right places, let's see what the otters are doing. At this spot, a family group of a mother, her pup from this year, and her daughter from last year have been hanging around. The pups are learning all the skills they will need to survive, including, of course, communication. We're pretty lucky in the Yukon that we have a lot of wilderness. It's great to spend time out there. Otters spend a lot of their time on land, playing, grooming, and rolling around with each other. This isn't just about getting a good cuddle, though. Otters roll on the ground to dry and clean their fur and spread oil throughout the hairs that makes their coat water repellent. They also spread around their own smell. At another site, a group of males has been coming and going. Adult males, who tend to be solitary in the winter, often band together in the summer. We don't really know why. It could be that they fish cooperatively, or that it's easier to protect a territory together. They could be safer from predators when traveling in a group. Or maybe they just like the company. What do you think? It's not just during the day that otters visit their latrines. Our cameras switch to black and white when there is low light. They show us that otters can be active at any time during the day or night. Even pups don't seem to have a set bedtime. These two visit their favorite wrestling ground no matter what the hour. Today when they come to play, something is wrong. Otters are nearsighted, which helps them see underwater but they rely more on smell once they're on land. They were right. A lynx is lying in wait. Whew, that was a close call. Lynx will predate on young otters if they can get them, but more often feed on smaller animals like snowshoe hare and, of course, birds. Birds of prey, like eagles, goshawks, and owls, can also be dangerous for young otters. Wolves can even take on an adult if the otter is caught away from the water. Many of the animals that share an otter's shoreline habitat, however, are herbivores, like moose, ground squirrels, grouse, and porcupine. This makes them neither predators nor competitors. What about these animals? We don't eat otters, but we do impact them in other ways. Otters avoid human activity, and we can easily displace them from their homes if we aren't careful about where we build along lakeshores and riverbanks. We can minimize our impact by staying away from key latrines and trails. Yeah, that's a serious camera. Yeah. Huh. Of course, we can't forget the beaver. Beavers don't compete with otters for food, despite what this little fellow thinks. They eat plants, not fish, which they store in underwater food caches for the winter. Otters, on the contrary, eat mainly fish. Adults need to eat 1 to 1.5 kilograms of fish a day, 
all year round. That would be like me eating three sockeye salmon a day. It takes a lot of energy staying warm while doing all the things otters need to do every day. At certain times of the year, fish congregate in large numbers to spawn. Have you heard of salmon runs? Well, other fish run as well, like these whitefish. Huge numbers of fish can come together in one place. For fish eaters, it's a time to feast. Spawning runs attract all kind of predators that would normally avoid each other. Even animals that don't normally fish, like wolves, take advantage of the plentiful food supply. If you can't tell the hierarchy of this wolf pack, just wait till they start fishing. The best spots always seem to go to the alphas. With enough food to go around, predators spend time in much closer proximity than during the rest of the year. What on earth happened to this white fish? Believe it or not, it was one of the lucky ones. Raven's fish beak first and grab fish by the dorsal fin of the tail. Sometimes they tear though and the fish gets away. We can learn a lot from these animals that live in close proximity without pushing each other out. The whitefish run was the last easy meal for the otters as winter sets in. Unlike in the summer, their choice of locations is limited by a scarcity of open water. This time, the group has made it safely to a new location. It is at the outflow of a lake where the water stays open year-round. It might seem that there is a whole lot of wilderness out there, but otters and many other animals actually have pretty specific habitat needs. Other animals take advantage of these open water areas as well. This American dipper is feeding on insects and crustaceans, which also make up a small part of the otter's diet. This adult male has left his band and is making his way on his own. It is likely easier for him to find enough food by himself than in a group now that the ice makes it harder to fish, but he is also looking for a mate. An otter's fur is made of layers, a dense underfur with long durable guard hairs. Think of how strong the fur has to be to take all of that sliding. Wild animals need to be very aware of their environment. They have to make good use of all of their senses. Although otters can hold their breath a long time, sometimes they have to travel long distances over the ice to reach their next denning site. This leaves them vulnerable to predators. Sometimes they will even travel over land. As a shortcut between bends in a river, 
or to get to new territory. He slides along the snow on his belly, propelling himself with his forepaws. It makes for a very efficient way to get around. It also makes a nice trail that other animals will follow. Otters often take over abandoned beaver lodges in the winter. Sometimes, they even force the beavers out. Luckily, beavers usually have more than one lodge. Here, a group has punched a hole into the side of a lodge for a second entrance. Now they have access to shelter, and more importantly, an insulated entry point into the water that won't freeze over, unlike the shrinking gaps in the ice out in the open. Getting enough to eat takes a lot of work when you need to eat 10 to 20 percent of your body weight in fish every day. Have you ever gone fishing? Sometimes you can fish all day without a single bite. That's not an option for otters, so they have to work very hard. Otters use their whiskers to fish in the dark when their eyesight isn't any good. They aren't picky though. They will eat whatever kind of fish they can catch. At each of these open water sites, otters make latrines that function much as they do in the summer. They still roll around when they come out of the water to dry their fur and make sure it's waterproof and spread their own unique scent. On land they don't see very well and instead rely on their keen noses. Where we rely heavily on sight to gather information about our environment, a lot of other animals primarily use smell. That's why they investigate with their noses. It takes a lot of paying attention to avoid being eaten. But life isn't all about eating and being eaten. Otters are social creatures, like people. They spend a lot of their time in close contact. They feed wherever they haul their catch onto the ice, they socialize and play, and of course, they dance. Do you remember what otters use latrines for? As spring approaches, the scent marking starts to have an important new meaning. Otters are not only getting information about the sex and social status of other animals, but now breeding status as well. Otters mate in the spring, right after females give birth. The female puts the developing embryos on hold throughout the summer and fall, so that her next litter will be born in the springtime as well. This adult male has traveled down all the creeks and rivers in this drainage, stopping at every latrine, and hasn't found a receptive female. He is faced with the prospect of a long and dangerous journey over land to get to the next river system, or he won't mate and pass on his genes this year. Otters have an incredible sense of direction and memory. Once this male decides to go, he heads for the next valley, a distance of four kilometers overland. He follows a straight line without a map or a compass. Otters have incredible spatial memories. Our male has reached the next valley in a new river system. It is a more remote area without human trails, so we won't be setting up any cameras to watch him. Let's wish him luck though. along with all of the other otters we've gotten to watch, 
and all the other animals that have survived another winter and are looking forward to spring here in the Yukon's boreal forest. is wonderful for hunting, fishing, and remembering who we are. What are some ways that we can show respect for the other animals that call the wilderness home? The areas that are important to otters make nice places to camp, fish, and hunt, and even build houses. The more permanently humans use an area, the more likely it is that otters will leave and have to find a new place to live. We can help by learning more about them, and then choosing carefully where to develop, and sometimes choosing not to.